three weeks ago, if you would have asked me, hey, are you excited for GTA 6? I would have told you, no. I have never played or owned a single Grand Theft Auto game before. It was always that series that my extended family would put in front of me and be like, go drive around or something, I don't know. But with all the rumors, leaks, and the recent announcement that we're getting a trailer for GTA 6 today, I want in on the excitement. And what better way to get in than to play every single Grand Theft Auto game back to back to see why everyone loves this series so much. And along the way, I'm gonna rate these games from best to worst, because the algorithm loves this kind of stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. It would be nice to know that the hundreds of hours of GTA I've played these past few weeks wasn't a complete waste of time. With all that being said, let's jump into Grand Theft Auto. What the f is this? I don't know if I'm alone here, but until I started making this video, I had absolutely zero idea of what Grand Theft Auto originally looked like. But this is absolutely not what I expected. This is a fully top-down game, and you play as Travis, Bubba, Troy, and a bunch of other characters, and they all for some reason wear yellow shirts. This is probably for visibility purposes, but come on, could someone not get like a neon green shirt? Although this game looks drastically different from every other game in the series, it actually has a really similar gameplay loop. Get a mission from this weird talking mouth thing, steal a car, complete the mission, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. This game is not worth beating. This game is a true relic of the past. You might want to boot this up once or twice just to remember where the series got its foundation, but after like an hour of this game, I had my fill. It gets pretty repetitive, there's not really an overarching story to all this, it's kind of just a mindless romp. And the same goes for the sequel. There are definitely some improvements here graphically, and instead of just the talking mouth, you get these creepy looking faces, which is nice, I guess. But at its core, same gameplay loop, no plot. Kind of fun to touch for shits and giggles, but it's not really worth a sinking a bunch of time into. I'm gonna give these two a D, which is the absolute lowest for the series. These were the first to ever do it, but time has not been kind to these games. GTA 3 really, really excited me. It opens up with this iconic piano piece, Rockstar Presents GTA 3. You get some artistic shots with the opening credits, and I was immediately invested. All until I actually saw the game. Now, I'm playing this on the definitive edition of this game, and I know a lot of people have complained about it for absolutely good reason. These games look awful. I was laughing throughout this entire intro just because of how goofy everything looks. I'm not really a graphic snob. I don't care about frame rates. I'm not huge into resolutions, but I'm genuinely convinced I would have had a better visual experience if I played these games on my PS2. But this is still the easiest way to play these games without emulating it, so bear with me while I show you this mess. This game opens up with a pretty interesting plot. You're a wannabe Nathan Drake looking dude, and you're in the middle of a heist. Your girlfriend double crosses you and shoots you, and you're arrested. The police van taking you to prison is hijacked and you escape. You steal a car, you make for Luigi's Club, and this guy gives you some missions to do. And then it hit me. This is just the same as the first two games. There is so much mundane shit you have to do at the opening of this game, and it got really repetitive for me. This game does have a narrative going on, which helps it a little bit, but being a silent protagonist in all of this, it just doesn't suit Grand Theft Auto. I think the best way I can describe this gameplay loop is like the first day of Animal Crossing. You gotta hear me out on this one. You have your boss, he gives you some mundane tasks like taking your daughter to work or just picking up weeds around town until you finally get to the good stuff. There are some highlight missions for me, like the sniper mission on the boat, all the car bombs you get to place around, but they were just too and far between for me. It felt like a bunch of filler missions in between the main stuff, but it was still an okay time. The story is just nothing special, which I think is what made it such a hard play for me. Being a silent protagonist, it's just hard to get invested in this game, especially with the plots of the other games that follow this one. It just makes this game feel really bland and just kind of forgettable. The driving is leagues better and definitely the highlight of this game. The variety of different vehicles and how they moved felt detailed and accurate, and finding a muscle car or a banshee and just driving around, I can't lie, it was pretty fun. The gunplay though is super unresponsive and just overall bad. There is a ton of unnecessary aim assist, the view you have when you're using the gun is really awkward, 
Anytime you have to use a gun in this game, it's kind of dreadful. I'm giving this game a C. It's not nearly as bad as the first two games, but it is nothing compared to what follows. Vice City is one of the games in the series that whenever Grand Theft Auto is brought up, it's one of the first ones you hear about outside of GTA 5. A lot of people have really fond memories of this game, and it was one of the games I was looking forward to most when I was getting into this video. From the surface, it just had a really unique vibe. The neon lights taking place in Miami, it just felt different from the rest of the series. And this is the first game I thought, I get it. This is a huge step up from 3 in a bunch of different ways. New vehicles, weapons, they do a ton of cool stuff in this game. You can ride helicopters, boats, motorcycles, there is a ton of variety in this game, and they all have their own unique feel. But I think the biggest improvement they had here was the story. This is the first GTA game that kept my interest throughout pretty much the entire thing. GTA 3 lost my interest pretty fast, and I would hardly consider the first two to even have a story. We play as Tommy Verecci, and the first thing he does after 15 years of jail is get involved with a drug deal that of course goes south. We lose the goods and all the money, and we spend our time trying to figure out who's responsible for all of this. We work for a bunch of different shady men, Sonny, Juan Cortez, Avery, all trying to figure out who's responsible. During this work, we're introduced to Diaz, and when one of his deals goes south and we help him out, he offers us some work. During this, we slowly realize that he was the one responsible for the first deal at the beginning of the game going wrong. We plot to kill him when the time is right, and eventually, once we do, we take over. We start buying businesses, we take over the town, until the ones closest to us turn on us, and after this crazy shootout, we still stand out on top. This is easily one of my favorite stories they've ever told in a Grand Theft Auto game. The bad guy us winning in the end is kinda really satisfying, but easily the best part about this game, and honestly all the PS2 GTA games, the cheats. All weapons, all vehicles, flying cars. It's just got a bunch of silly things in it that make it a lot of fun to come back to and just mess around in. I'm giving Vice City an A. I had so much fun playing this game. It holds up super well today. If you are ever considering playing any Grand Theft Auto game, this is definitely one to consider. Grand Theft Auto Advance is honestly pretty cool. It's very, very similar to the first two games in the series. But for some reason, I just find it so much more charming on the Game Boy than I do the PlayStation. It's honestly crazy to me how much they were able to get into a GBA cart. It doesn't feel like a ton was compromised either. You can still drive around, cars have their own unique values, you can flip cars, you rank up stars. It's all kinda here. The gameplay loop is kind of the exact same, but I think it just works better on an on-to-go machine. And there's a narrative going on. This game is actually a prequel to GTA 3. We play as Mike, who gets caught up in some mafia business with his friend Vinny. Vinny seems to be killed, and we swear revenge and to find whoever did this to him. We do missions for 8-Ball, which is a character in GTA 3, and a paranoid bar owner named Johnny, until he's killed by the Yardies. When we confront them, their leader, Courtney, claimed to not be the culprits. And they use us to do some things for them because they also claim to be looking for the killer. We're pitted up against Cisco, the leader of the Colombian cartel, who warns us that we're being used. And we team up with him and the leader of the Yakuza because they both said they would help with finding the killer. We find Cisco dead, and as we chase the culprits, it's revealed to be none other than Vinny this entire time. We get in this massive shootout, and as we're about to kill Vinny, with his last words, he warns us that once he's dead, people are going to be coming after us. We team back up with the Yakuza to take down Courtney and the Yardies, who have a hit out on us. But once we actually get into it, the Yakuza flee, and it's just us versus them. After a massive shootout, we come out on top, Courtney begs for her life, the cops invade, we escape on Cisco's plane, and leave Liberty City. This story is awesome. The fact that it ties into GTA 3, answering the question on why 8-Ball was in that van with us, I love it. For me, this game is right in between GTA 3 and Vice City. It is a solid B. This is a hidden gem on the Game Boy Advance, and it's honestly worth your time to play it. San Andreas is another one of those big names that you hear all about when you talk about GTA. The only thing I knew about this game was, I have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip. But I was pleasantly surprised by this game. Its strongest aspect is its map. This game is insanely large. It is still the second biggest map in this entire series. It is four times larger than Vice City, and it's insane they were able to do this all on the PS2. 
there's 90 more vehicles than Vice City with boats, planes, all of that. It has about the same number of weapons, but it really felt like they put a lot of effort into just going bigger and better. The story was also a nice change of pace. The last two PS2 entries were all about big crime, mob bosses, all of that, and this story just felt more down to earth. I still enjoyed the story more of Vice City, but it was just nice to see something new. We play as Carl, or also known as CJ, and he's in the process of being arrested. After a five year return to Los Santos for his mom's funeral, he finds that his gang, the Valos and the Vero, are all at war with one another. His gang is currently losing, and he feels he has to stay in town to set things right. And on top of all this, there's a ton of police corruption going on. Characters from the previous game have little roles like Catalina and Ken Rosenberg, and it was really cool to see. Overall, it feels really similar to Vice City, but it's just a really great time. I think it's slightly behind Vice City just because I enjoyed that story more, but it's still definitely worth your time. GTA 4 is a game I never hear about, ever. Everyone loves to talk about GTA 5, San Andreas, and Vice City, but I have never heard a whisper about GTA 4, ever. It's like it doesn't even exist. Console-wise, it's stuck on the PS3, and it was a bitch to find. But hey, maybe it's a hidden gem. This game is tiny coming off of San Andreas. It has a 75% smaller land area, and it's not even half of what the San Andreas map is. This is a series that always feels like it's trying to do bigger and better, so it's bizarre to me that they chose to make everything so much smaller. You play as Nico, an ex-Serbian soldier, and has escaped to Liberty City in hopes of finding the American dream. He quickly finds out that this is not how it's gonna go, and he gets caught up in some crime with his cousin Roman. After he kills the loan shark he was working for because he slept with his cousin's girlfriend, they're kidnapped and all hell breaks loose. I'm gonna be real, this game did not hold my attention whatsoever. At this point, I had played six GTA games back to back, and it was just exactly what I expected. It looked how I expected, it played how I expected, yeah, it looked better than the previous games I played, but it just wasn't there for me. It was just so unremarkable, it felt like it did nothing new, and it doesn't really surprise me that I had heard nothing about this game. It was definitely more enjoyable than GTA 3, but absolutely nowhere near San Andreas or Vice City. Chinatown Wars was the best palate cleanser at just the right time. Returning to a style similar to the originals on the DS, one of my favorite handhelds of all time. It's exactly what I needed. Just like the GBA game, I was just so impressed with how much they were able to do in this game. It's got a couple different quirky little DS minigame moments, but it's still a very similar experience to the GBA game. The gameplay loop is the same, the story is also told the same way, it's just a more detailed experience. We're back in Liberty City for the last time, and we're looking for revenge for the death of our father. Of course, we get caught up in underground politics, some mafia work. Honestly, the plot is nothing that incredible. It's just a really fun and memorable game outside of the story. I'd say it's slightly above the GBA version. It's just a slightly finer tuned experience. Finally, the big one. Grand Theft Auto V. Released on three different generations of consoles, supported for over a decade, this is the GTA game. I had very high expectations for this game. For over a decade, people are still playing this game, and I just had to know why. This is the game that inspired me to make this video in the first place. This is the largest GTA by an insane amount. It is more than double the size of the San Andreas map. There's 750 different vehicles, there's over 100 weapons, there were absolutely no corners cut when they made this game. Driving has never felt more unique and responsive. Although there's still a shit ton of aim assist, the gunplay has never been better. And on top of it all, it looks phenomenal. GTA has the best introduction in the entire franchise. You're in the middle of a heist, you're cornering hostages, you're setting off bombs, you're getting into shootouts. It's really rememberable and it's one of the best tutorials I think I've ever played. At the end of the intro, we are captured, we make a deal with the FIB, and there's a time skip of nine years into the future. The three main characters, Michael, Trevor, and Franklin, all have their plots intertwined with one another, and it has one of the best pacings and most organic feels to a story that any GTA has ever had. Outside of the updated mechanics to driving and shooting, heists was probably the best thing they added to this game. These heists kept it going for me. They added so much value to this gameplay loop to where other games faltered and got repetitive, 
this game always remains fresh. You break into and blow up a government building, you rob a bank for millions. It is always a highlight when you get to do a heist. It's hard for me to put into words and just sum up why I like this story so much. You really just have to experience it for yourself. You spend this entire game going through these missions with these three characters and watching them grow and glow closer. And at the very end, you're offered this ultimatum. You have to play it. If somehow you're someone like me in 2023, you haven't played GTA 5, please try it. The one thing I left out, and obviously the reason everyone loves GTA 5 so much, even to this day, GTA Online. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't play a ton of it, but I can acknowledge how great it is. Doing heists with friends, bounties, leveling up, buying expensive cars, there is a ton to do and it's really well supported. And although I didn't have a ton of time to put into it, I think it's a really, really great thing they put into this game. GTA 5 was and is the shining star of this franchise, and I can only hope that GTA 6 can also deliver. This is my final list. Feel free to mention if you agree or disagree. Hey, I might even respond to you. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And you don't seem